Okay, so here we go. This is a greatest hits and hips class. And it's uh, targeted to be about 45 minute practice. So let's start um, at the back of the mat, standing. And we'll just go through a little bit of a warm up. As you stand with your feet imprinting your mat, let yourself gently rock forward and back from the tops of your feet to the heels. And when we're walking in shoes, sometimes the whole footprint is not landing on the ground or in our shoes. And what happens is that information of how we're landing starts to travel up through the body. And so um, it's important to land on the full footprint. So let's take the big toes and the small toes, lift all of those toes. And just, you don't even have to lift the heels. You don't have to lift the balls of the feet, but just transfer the weight a little bit, heels to balls of the feet. And just sort of feel into that. And, and then we'll do a little bit of a joint warm up. So let's take the toes back down to the floor and then we'll lift the big toes up and down. Big toes up and down a few times, keeping the base of that big toe down. And then we'll anchor the big toes down and take those smaller toes up and down and anchor the balls of the feet all the way to the floor as those little toes lift up and down. Great. Balancing on your right foot, Let's take the left knee up to the height of the hip. So it's about a 90 degree angle under your knee there. And then give your ankle a nice roll in one direction. Making sure your standing leg has a micro bend in the knee and that the muscles are engaging through the calf, through the, through the thigh. You'll be drawing more awareness to your core here, rotating the ankle in the opposite direction keeping your lower and upper abdominals engaged and a nice lift through the crown of your head. Great. And then we'll let that left foot come back down and finding your balance on that leg, we'll lift the right knee and start rolling the ankle in one direction again. And keeping a micro bend in your left knee, feeling the ankle joint, feeling the calf muscles. And we'll rotate in the opposite direction Good, and then we'll let that right foot come back down to the floor. And then if you're at the back of your mat, I'm going to ask you to take a big inhale breath as you stretch your arms up over the head. And then as you exhale, a swan dive forward. So you're gonna take your hands down to the floor with soft knees and give your hips a little walking out, pressing one heel down at a time, walk your knees back and forth. And then, Taking an inhale breath. As you exhale, I'm gonna get you to walk your hands forward till you're in a plank. You're gonna pause in that plank for a moment, making sure the back of the head is lifting towards the ceiling. And then walking your hands back towards your feet, standing on the footprints. You're gonna lift yourself back right up to standing. And on your next inhale breath, we'll do that one more time. We're going to take an inhale, stretch the arms up over the head, and exhale, swan dive forward. Once you walk, bring your hands down, you can walk your hands forward into a plank position. Good. We're going to hold it there for a breath. And then walk your hands back towards your feet. And let yourself hang there for a moment gently with your knees soft. You can grab a hold of your elbows or cross your arms and let yourself feel the weight of your head. Gently nodding right and left, yes and no. Feeling that the neck is loosening, relaxing. Great. And then 
You can release your arms, let them dangle down towards the floor. And we're gonna do a roll up. So taking an inhale and an exhale, breathing as you need to roll yourself back up to standing. Great. And taking your hands to your shoulders, you're gonna make some big circles with those elbows. and rotating in the opposite direction. Good. All right. And then letting your arms come out to the side, we're gonna turn the palms so they face the ceiling and the arms are straightened. And then we're gonna flex the wrists back. Yes. And start to push outwards through both palms. And you're gonna imagine like you have a, a point or like a, like a circle or a button on your palms and that that point is pressing outwards. And you're gonna breathe into the nerve sensations in your arms as you give yourself a little bit more external rotation from your shoulder joints. Good. And then on your next exhale, let your arms soften down. And let's take one more inhale breath at the back of the mat, stretching the arms up over the head, and then exhale into a swan dive. Good. And then just taking yourself down to your knees, onto the hands and knees. Good. All right. Let's let, let yourself sit back onto your heels. So you're gonna keep your toes pointed, sit back to the heels, let your arms stretch out forward in front of you. Uh, sorry, we're going to come down to the floor. So forehead towards the floor, like you're in a child's pose. Yes. And then keeping your hips on your heels or centered over your heels, take your arms towards the right. So you feel a stretch in your left rib cage. And take five nice breaths there. inviting your mind, your thoughts, to really focus on your body right now. And when you're ready to, with your five breaths completed, transfer your arms towards the left. And breathing into your right rib cage. And when those five breaths are completed, bring yourself back up to seated. And then come down to sit on the mat more towards the center of the mat. And take the soles of your feet together so that your legs have like a diamond shape in between. And we'll start with sitting up nice and tall and then inhale the breath. And as you exhale your first breath, you're gonna to start to roll back over your sacrum and over your spine until you're all the way back to the floor. When you take your inhale breath, you're going to roll back up to seated. And on your exhale, you're gonna roll forward so your forehead is reaching towards your feet. Good, and then on the next inhale, you'll come back up to seated. And on the next exhale, you'll roll back to the floor again. When you're taking your next inhale breath, you're gonna roll back up to seated again. And on the next exhale, rolling forward over the feet again. Good. And then on your next inhale, coming back up to seated, you're gonna take your left hand to the floor, raise your right arm over, for a little side stretch and letting your left hand move down or across the floor away from your body as your body feels it wants to move, making sure that your sitting bones are still on the floor. And then taking yourself to the other side. So bringing your right hand down to the floor, left arm stretching up and over, breathing into your 
rib cage. And then coming back to the center. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's move into a pigeon pose. So if this is okay for your knees, we're going to go into a pigeon. And if it's not so great for your knees, you can do a figure four. So a modified pigeon on the back. But if, if pigeon's okay for you, let's come into a downward dog position to start off. And from here, you're going to take an inhale breath, lift up through the right leg, and then take that right knee forward so it's behind your right wrist. And angle your shin forward as close to parallel to the front of your mat as possible, but it might not be totally parallel. And then you're going to start to be aware of your hips. So you're going to try to align both of your hips so they're in one plane from the side. And then slowly allow your hips to sink towards the floor. And you may or may not get right down to the floor, and that's okay. You can always place a little prop under the back hip if you need some support. And you can be in an upright position for pigeon, or you can also come into sleeping pigeon. I like to actually be in the upright position and let my hips kind of lift on the inhale and lower on the exhale with the back leg stretched out straight behind you. And then let's release that. And so you're going to take your hands back to the floor in front of you, engage up through the abdominals, and sweep your right leg back. And you're going to come back into a downward dog. Good. And then take an inhale breath, lifting up through the left leg and bending that knee forward so it's placed behind the left wrist. The foot comes forward a bit. And you're going to draw those hips down with that right leg straight back behind you with the toes pointed. and breathing into the hips, the psoas, through the glutes. And then when you're ready to, taking one more breath here, place the hands back to the floor and you're gonna take your abdominals up and float your left leg back into the downward dog. Good. And then coming back down to the hands and knees. So here, uh, you may want to double your mat because we're going to be kneeling down on one knee. So let's take that right knee to the floor. And the right toes are going to be curled under, and the foot is going to come straight out behind the center of the back of the knee. And then as you come up with your upper body, you're going to be kneeling on that right knee. The left foot is going to come forward. It's going to come straight forward from the left hip. And there's going to be a 90 degree angle under that left knee. So the ankle is over under top of the knee. Good. And then just doing a little double check to make sure that your right hip is not shifting out to the right. So you're stacking your right hip on top of the right knee. And taking your left thumb to the left hip crease and encouraging that hip crease to drop down a little bit. So you're wanting to feel that both sides of your waist, the rib cage, are long. So you can even place your hands sort of just to feel the sides of your rib cage. Good. And then let's set up the spine. So we're going to take that belly and hollow it back a little bit. Slightly draw the sternum forward and then draw the C spine a little back. So you're feeling longer and a little more intensity through the spine. The spine is working. And we're going to try to keep this structure as you take your left arm forward in space. Externally rotate your arm at the shoulder 
spread your fingers wide, flexing with the wrist. Good. And then let's take the right one forward as well, same position. But now you're going to take the right arm right up beside the ear. And then you're going to look down just with your eyes as the head gently pulls back and you're reaching up through the top of your head. So you're reaching up through the top of the head. You're pushing through both palms in those two directions. See if you can make that left waist just a tiny bit longer. So you want to keep maintaining the length and the reaching up of the rib cage, the external rotation at your shoulders, the reaching out through the fingertips, sinking that left hip crease just down just a tiny bit more. Yeah, great. And then on your next exhale, you're going to soften your arms, soften your spine, and let yourself bring your hands down. You can switch sides to take your left knee down to the floor. And right foot comes forward, ankle underneath the knee. And making sure that your left hip is now stacked over top of your left knee. Good. Um, always an option too, if you have like sort of a portable little like a mirror, something you can always practice uh, with to help you just notice different uh, elements of your alignment. And then making sure your back toes are flexed, uh, curled under, I should say. And then let's take the belly and hollow a little bit. So you're trying to point your tailbone towards the floor and take your sternum a little forward, drawing those shoulder blades back lifting up through the crown of the head and taking the left arm forward straight in front of you. And then the right arm, good. Externally rotate, flex the wrists. And this time the left arm is gonna come straight up beside the left ear. Great. And your whole work now is to keep the spine as long as possible. Your left hip stacked on top of your left knee and you're breathing. You're breathing through the ribs and you're imagining if you've been in the class with me, you're imagining I'm maybe putting my hands on your rib cage and just encouraging that lift to keep happening through the whole front, back, and sides of the rib cage. Great. And you're keeping your right arm at shoulder height and your left arm towards the ear. Good. Noticing if the head is starting to droop forward, you're going to gently draw back and keep stretching up a little bit higher through the crown of the head and a little bit more down through the tailbone for your last two breaths here. And then you're going to softly melt your arms and melt the spine. And we'll come down and switch sides to the opposite knee again. Great. So in between the, the two hip eldoas, we're going to do um, a, a psoas stretch. So now you're back on your right knee, and your left knee can come out at an, an angle, and the foot and knee will be tracking in the same direction. It's not super critical exactly where it is. Just make sure your ankle is under the knee. And I want again, you want your right hip on top of your right knee. And what's going to happen here is you're going to take your right shin out to the right a little bit more. So it's going to come outside. So it's not directly back from the knee. Perfect. And then you're going to try to keep your hip still facing forward. And now really pointing that tailbone towards the floor. Good. You can let your left hand rest on your thigh. And we're going to take that right arm straight up beside the ear. And you're going to push that right palm up towards the ceiling and start to move your right ribs a little bit out to the right side. But remember, you're always in charge of what's happening. You're always aware of the sensations that are going on. And you're never pushing anything to the point of a spasm or a contraction that's uncomfortable. So as you're feeling your tailbone really dropping to the floor, you're going to roll the right pinky toe towards the floor. So you're feeling all those toes on the floor. Good. 
So it's still stretching up through the crown of the head. Keep pointing your tailbone down. If you don't feel a lot of stretch through the inside of that hip joint, you're gonna just take your upper body from the belly button, just lean a little bit forward. And then on your next exhale, you can soften your arm down and let yourself come down and change sides. Taking your left knee back down. And then that right foot can come out to the side at an angle. Left hip over the knee. And you're gonna take your left shin out to the left a little bit more. And you're still gonna to try to keep your hips facing forward. Great. So that's gonna feel a little more challenging on the left hip side because your shin is turned out. And this is how we get that lengthening through the psoas muscle. So let's rest the right hand on the thigh and let's take the left arm up beside the ear. You can externally rotate the arm, flex the wrist back and push the palm upwards as you start to play a little bit with the sensations and you're breathing. So you're moving your left ribs out a little bit as you stretch the arm up and you're pointing that tailbone down a lot and rolling the pinky toe of that left foot towards the floor making sure your jaw is relaxed. Good, if you wanna feel a little bit more intensity, you can try leaning a little forward with your upper body, but still pointing that tailbone down a lot and reaching up and out, pinky toe of that left foot coming towards the floor. Last two big breaths. And on that second exhale, you can soften everything down. And if your knees are okay, we'll switch one more time and bring that right knee down to the floor. Knees are okay still? Great, okay. So this time your left foot is going to come out to the side and it's gonna point um, out to the side. Good, so now the foot, so if you look down at your right knee, your left foot is going to be, um, the heel is definitely not going to come behind the knee. It will be level with the knee or in front of it, so forward of the knee. If you drew a line in front of your knee that's on the floor, the left foot is either gonna be at the line or in front of the line away from you. For most of us, the foot will be a little forward of that line um, because we have, you know, tightness in the hips and things like that. So I want you to feel towards the back of your pelvis that the back of your pelvis is still relatively in line here. So if um, your left uh, side of the pelvis is really far back, further than the right side, then you're going to walk the foot more forward. Good. And you want your left knee and your left toes tracking in the same direction. Okay, so again, taking that left hip crease a little bit down and stacking the right hip on top of the right knee, right toes are curled under. You're gonna hollow the belly slightly, draw the sternum forward, C-spine back, so feeling very tall. And we're gonna take that left arm forward in space and it's gonna stay forward in space and the right one will come up beside the right ear. Great. And then the eyes are going to roll down to look towards the floor. You're gonna take about eight to 10 deep breaths. So you're making sure that that left knee is bent and the foot is flat on the floor. So the knee is pointing to the side. See if you can find a little more spiraling through the arms, making sure the jaw is relaxed, a little smile on the face, stretch the crown up, that tailbone down. And then softly on your next exhale, release your arms first and let everything else relax. Good. Again. 
So once you have your alignment here perfect, we're going to take the make sure that the left hip is on top of the knee. And then you're going to take your fingers to your right hip crease and just let that hip crease kind of sink down. So it's it's bringing your pelvis to more of a level position as much as your body is able to. Great. And then hollowing the belly. Let's set up that aldoa spine to get super long from the tailbone to the top of the head. Good. Reaching your right arm forward in space. Externally rotate from your shoulder. And then taking your left arm forward as well. Externally rotating and draw it up beside the left ear. Good. So feeling this nice line between your left knee and the left palm as you breathe. Stretching out through all those fingers. Feeling all these micro movements. And feeling how because of the patterning that we have in our bodies, it is, is difficult to hold this shape. And so what we're doing is constantly making these little adjustments to strengthen, to open any stuck areas in the fascia. Beautiful. Stretching right up through the crown, dropping that tailbone down, slightly softening that right hip crease, lumbar back, T-spine forward, C-spine back. And good, taking two more deep breaths here through the whole rib cage, right into your back ribs. And on that second exhale, you can softly melt your arms and bring everything down. Good, maybe take, a, take yourself to standing and just see how your hips and legs feel right now. Maybe take a few steps around the room. And then well, let's make our way back to the mat. And you can bring yourself so you're sitting on your mat about um, two thirds of the way back with your legs stretched out forward. And we're gonna do an SI joint um, Eldoa. And so here we go. So you're gonna take yourself back onto your elbows. So you're gonna lean on your elbows so the elbows are a little past your shoulders at the back. And I want you to feel down into your back pelvis. So you're gonna find where your sacrum is. And if you tuck your tailbone up towards the ceiling, you're gonna feel the sacrum uh, pressing down towards the floor. And then with your legs straight out in front of you, make a big V. So you're gonna open your legs wide as wide as feels uh, accessible and comfortable for you today. And then I want you to flex your feet at the ankles. And you might not find a ton of, uh, of internal rotation, so just give yourself a little reaching in towards the floor with your inner thighs. And the heels are pressing forward and the big toes are reaching towards the belly button and you're pushing down into your sacrum. So sacrum into the floor, tailbone tucking under, reaching up towards the ceiling. The pubic bone is going to reach away from the tailbone. And then everything at the front of your body is going to be kind of reaching back. So everything is tucking under, belly button reaching away from the pubic bone. The ribs are lifting. The upper teeth are moving back. Everything is moving back in space. And you're reaching forward through those heels and drawing your inner thighs towards the floor, big toes towards the belly button. Maintaining your breathing. You're gonna internally rotate those thighs. Yes, tucking the tail under, pubic bone reaching one more time away from the tailbone. And then you're gonna softly release, but we're gonna not change the position yet. You're going to leave your right leg where it is and just take your left foot to the floor. So you're going to bend your left knee, take your foot to the floor. Perfect. And this time you're going to do the same thing, but just with the right leg. So here we go. Right leg is internally rotating, which means your inner thigh is drawing down and pushing towards the floor as your heel is pushing forward. And your big toes of your right foot are reaching in towards the navel and you're tucking your tail under, so you're pushing down through the right side of your sacral 
iliac, the right sacroiliac joint reaching in towards the floor here. And to add a little bit to this, imagine you're engaging your right or your left um, thigh. So your left hip joint is a little bit inwardly rotating, right knee is moving in, left knee is moving out a little, left ankle is rolling in. So your whole left leg is also engaged, but you're pushing down a little bit more now through that right sacroiliac joint. Tailbone tucking under, pubic bone moving away. All those ribs are sliding back for the last couple of breaths here. And then slowly, softly release the tension of that right leg. And then you're going to stretch out your left leg back into a V and take that right foot to the floor. Good. And so internally rotating your left leg, which means that you're pressing your inner thigh towards the floor. Your right leg is going to become activated, right thigh rolling in, right knee rotating out, and right ankle rolling in. So the ball of the big toe is on the floor, and your tailbone is tucking under. Here we go. So as you're breathing, you're going to keep reaching that tailbone upwards, left heel forward, left big toes reaching towards the belly button. So you're doing some inversion and inner rotation. And the pubic bone is sliding away from the tailbone, so you keep tucking under and pushing the left sacroiliac joint a little more deeply into the floor. Good. Maintaining that intensity for the next two breaths. And then softly let your left leg release, unwind. And then let's bring yourself down to the middle of the mat and you'll lie down. Good, for a C-spine, a C-spine Aldoa. Great. <clears throat> okay. So let's start by feeling into the sacrum and the lower and upper abdominals drawing them down. You're going to feel like at the sacrum, there's a nice um, kind of like, like, a, like a circle again, just like in your palms. And that's going to be a point that you keep anchored down. And then there's going to be more of a dot again at the low back ribs, shoulder blades, and back of the head. Great. And so keeping the awareness of your spine growing in length, I want you to take your arms up towards the ceiling. So they're going to make an 11. Start up from the shoulders. Good. And now I want you to reach your arms up even more. Reach them up as much as you can. Perfect. Find your collarbones and your shoulder blades and let those, those um, collarbones and shoulder blades and the tissues around start to rotate your arm bones externally. And find your triceps. And as you engage them, it's straightening your elbows, flex back through the wrists. And now finding those wrists and the area just above the wrist, you want to push the palms straight up to the ceiling. And then keeping your spine in place, one at a time, draw your knees towards the chest. So a nice slow movement. Perfect. Flexing the feet at the ankles. Good. And as you draw those knees in towards the chest, you're going to engage those abdominals a little bit more and push up through those palms as you straighten and slightly flatten through the neck, lengthening the back side of your neck. You're going to take now your head a little bit off the floor, just maybe a centimeter. Super, super small lift. And as you do that, you're going to have a little more space to reach back through the top of your head. See if you can now simultaneously reach down and out through your tailbone and back through the crown, maintaining your breathing, a little smile on that face. Last two breaths here. And then slowly, softly release your arms, take your head back down to the floor, soften your legs down and let your spine relax. Great. And then rolling yourself back up to seated. 
Good. Let's come to a cross-legged position. Great. And finding your sitting bones. You're always welcome to do these seated postures at the wall, if you wish, to help guide you with um, feeling some feedback for your spine. Ideally, though, they are done away from the wall. So you're going to find your sitting bones and sit tall, starting to push down through the outer knees. So they push down towards the floor. Good. Giving yourself a little hollow through the belly, you're drawing back a little through your lumbars. And then without moving those lumbars, I want you to slightly slide that T-spine forward. So you're learning to differentiate these different parts of your spine. Nice. And then take the occiput to hollow behind your head a little bit back and lengthen it up. Good. So the top of your head just got a little closer to the ceiling. Nice. And then take your arms out to the side, palms facing up. And then you can start to bring your arms up overhead. The goal here is to touch the fingertips together. You can bend your elbows if they need to bend. And as you look down, keep pushing your fingertips up higher and higher. Fingertips are touching, and you're going to lengthen those arms up. Great. Maybe the palms will come right together. And as you're breathing, you're still taking the rib cage all the way up. And you're feeling like you're sitting down even more into your sitting bones and those outer knees are pushing down. Good. Making sure that your jaw is not getting any tension. You're going to keep it, keep it relaxed. And even move the top of the, the, the tongue, the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth and see if you can get a little bit taller here. That's it. Drawing a little bit back through your arms, a little bit reaching up higher. One more time, reaching up with the next breath. And on your exhale, slowly letting all of that tension soften and melt down, feeling gravity in your body again. Good. All right. And so then the next one we'll do is we're going to take the feet flat to the floor. And good. You're having about a 90 degree angle under the knees. And let's take those big toes up in the air if you can. Hold them up in the air and rotate your inner thighs in, the knees a little out, the ankle joints a little in, and then find your sitting bones. And I want you to sit nice and tall here with the hollow through the belly, sternum a little forward, and crown of the head straightening, lifting higher. Take your arms forward right in front of your shoulders and externally rotate. Flex the wrists and take your arms up beside the ears like an 11. And you're going to look down as your palms push up. This is just for the T-spine, just a little below the bra strap area. Good. Pushing upwards, feeling the weight of your sitting bones deeply, tipping that tailbone so it's reaching in down to the floor. See if you can flex the wrists and straighten a little more through the arms. Feel it in your back, feel it in your, in your thoracic spine as you rotate and spiral the arms out again. And find the muscles in your back, feeling them as they push and reach those arms higher. So you're getting that space created now between your uh, mid T spine. Last couple of breaths here. And on your second exhale, you can let everything soften. Good. And then we can take the mat to the edge of a door, to the back of a door or the wall or the side of a dresser or a couch, any kind of vertical surface. And we'll go into the L5 S1. So as you lie down on your back, let your legs relax against that vertical surface and let your hip flexors really take a break here. Feel that your lower back 
the back side of your pelvis is broadening out to the sides. Okay, so from here, finding your sacrum again, and your low ribs, and your shoulder blades, and your chin is dropping in towards your throat. As the back of the head stretches back across to the back short edge of your mat. Flexing your feet at the ankles, reach your heels up towards the ceiling and turn your inner thighs in, letting your big toes reach up towards your belly button. I should say reach down, I guess. Good, so a little bit of inversion through the feet. Good, and let your eyes roll down in the head to look down across the front of your body. Arms reaching up towards the ceiling and externally rotate your arms. Good, flexing out the wrists. Now start to reach the palms as if you're reaching up to the ceiling and keep reaching them as you slowly draw either one arm down at a time or both together, it's your choice. Sometimes it's nice to go one arm at a time to sort of to really feel what's going on in each of the shoulder joints. And as you push up through your heels, push down through your sacrum and push back through your palms. Continue to reach your tailbone towards the vertical surface and reach the top of your head back. With each breath, you're growing deeper in your confidence. You're growing deeper in your ability to relax so that you can do this intense work without creating negative tension in the body. Good, using your breath, reaching up through the heels, flex the feet at the ankles, flex the wrists, open out through those fingers making sure that your arms are not touching the ears. You should just be parallel for the last two breaths here. And then slowly, slowly soften your arms, soften your legs, and soften your spine. Great, let your knees bend. You can take your feet to the wall. And when you're ready to, rolling over in one piece, to either side. <laughs> 